little thing. Right, okay, wonderful. Do you know it's good to step out in faith? Yes. It it's is. good to yes. just, just and, and, and I and, and I want to encourage you that, because we're all gifted. We all have gifts. It's not just I haven't got them all. I've got one or two. But you've got gifts as well, so we've all got gifts. So this morning, this morning, this afternoon, <laughs> hallelujah. Let me think. Let's pray. Father God, mm. we, we thank you so much that you've been so with us this afternoon. Thank we you. thank you so much, Father God, for this place that's anointed with the yes. power and the presence of the, of the Holy Spirit. We thank you so much, O oh God, that your word is an anointed word. That your word, O oh God, when it was sent out into the world, oh God, never returns empty and void. It just always fulfills the purpose for Amen. which you have sent it, O oh God. Yes. And so today we want to step into your word. We believe it's relevant today. We, pray, we believe it's relevant for our lives right now. We pray, O oh God, that you would inspire us and strengthen us in the powerful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. Where do I start? Let's think. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. We're going we're gonna to break bread a little bit later. And I will tell you now the instructions in case I forget later on, okay? Yeah. So we'll take a piece of bread and we'll walk across here and we'll take a cup. And you can eat the bread straight away if you want, or even as you're walking back to your seat. But will you hold the cup and we'll all share and drink the cup at the same time? Have you got that? Yes. So, Amen. But if, you, if you're thirsty, you, you know. <laughs> Who am I? But that's what we'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Explain that it's not alcohol. Oh, yeah. It's not alcohol, by, by the way. It's, uh, it's juice. So you say <laughs> it's uh, Alistair's finest. Okay. Well, no, we're caught. Anyway, that's bad way. So, right, listen. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness. What's he calling? It's called, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Hallelujah. Prepare the way of the Lord. So, um, straight away we jump into Matthew 3, because that was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. And, uh, and in Matthew... Chapter 3, the fulfilment of that prophecy takes place. Verse 1, in those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness. John the Baptist came and he said, repent yes, for yes. the kingdom of heaven yes. is here. Amen. Repent. This is what John the Baptist says. And then he said, this is what was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. So the, the word supports the word. The word strengthens the word. The word builds on the word. And what did John the Baptist say? Uh, prepare, he said, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is near. And that's in Matthew chapter 3. So we flick over the page to Matthew chapter 4. And here comes Jesus, the one who prepared the way. And he said, uh, what, what had happened is that uh, that Jesus, he went to got baptised by John the Baptist, okay? So he, he bumped into John, he was baptised. Jesus was taken into the wilderness. He was taken to where he was tempted and challenged and almost like a battle with the, with the enemy, with Satan. Yeah, That's what happened to Jesus. Right. John the Baptist on the other hand would continue to, to pr prepare the way. Prepare the way, prepare the way. Preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So John's still preaching, Jesus is battling. And then there's a shift. And when we move down in Matthew chapter 4, as we, as we look, he says when Jesus... Uh, um, he, come, he comes out of the wilderness as Jesus. It said in verse 11 that the devil left him and the angels came and attended Jesus. So this is the situation that we have right at the birth of the good news yes. and what we believe. This is yes. the foundation that it was built yes. on. Hallelujah. And so this is where Jesus is. The devil yeah. left Jesus. Mm. But guess what? He left Jesus because he couldn't overpower Jesus. Amen. He went and got John the Baptist. Yes. John the Baptist is in prison now. So he left Jesus and he went for the, the second one. He went for the one. He went for Jesus. Although John came first and Jesus came second. There was a reverse and there was a change. There was a switch. John the Baptist said, I must become less and he be, must become greater. And so, it's, so then we, we are in, uh, in verse 12 of Matthew 4. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he went through to Galilee. You see, the enemy now has silenced John the Baptist. But, for, but Jesus. Amen. But we've got Jesus. Amen. We've got Jesus. And so Jesus, uh, and so Jesus uh, he, he, he speaks and he goes, comes out and we've got other prophecies. But then we come to verse 17. Yes. And it says, from that time on, Jesus began to preach. Repent. 
for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent. This is a, so in, or, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must repent. We must repent. Otherwise, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's how we enter. And then we continue in, in Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4, it's the calling of the disciples. It's the calling of the disciples. Do you know you've been called? Amen. Put your hand up. Do you know you've been called? Yes. You've been called. You might not know what to yet, but you're called. You're called. Some of us may be a little bit lost in the maze and, and haven't come to, and, and that's what the enemy does. He imprisons us. He wants to take us out. But Jesus says no. And the Spirit of God speaks yes. to you today and says no. We're not having that. We're not having that. So, as Jesus then, he's, he's, Jesus wandering, John's in prison, being, uh, probably being attacked by the enemy because Satan's not happy because he could not overcome our King, our Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. And this is what we should be strengthened by because it's Jesus that can overcome the enemy. Yes. It is Jesus. Amen. Not John the Baptist. Praise Jesus. John the Baptist prepared the way, but it is Jesus. We can't. We can't overcome the enemy. No. We can't. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, and they were, they were casting nets. They were just doing into the lake, fishing, fishing they were. And Jesus came up and he said simply these words, come, follow me. Mm. Come. Yes. Follow me. Jesus said, come. Guess what? Verse 20. At once, at once, they left their nets and followed him. And we should do the same. Not leave our nets, not leave our, not, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to all leave your jobs and everything like that, apologies, but what I'm saying is, is leave the doubts yes. that are in you and follow Jesus. Get the, I struggle so much with doubts. Anybody else struggle yeah. with doubts? I struggle so much. Leave them and follow Jesus. That's all he said and the disciples followed him. At once it said, they followed. Then he continued to Jesus. Verse 21, going on from there, he saw two other brothers. James, son of Zebedee, and the brother John. And they were in a boat with their father Zebedee. And they were preparing the nets. And Jesus called them. He yeah. called them. Yeah. And immediately they left. Immediately, immediately they left. And the fa- they left the boat and the father. So they left the boat and the father. And they followed Jesus. They followed him. Such was this Jesus. This is powerful stuff. Think about it. Put yourself in the boat. Fixing the net. Your dad sat there. You're having a cup of coffee. Or whatever they were. You're chilling on this guy. Hey, follow me. It's like, whoa. The Spirit of God must have just come and picked him up and then that was it. They were going. We need the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and encourage us. We cannot do it alone. We can't do it alone. We need, I need the Holy Spirit. I, my prayer every day is, Lord, would you fill me with the Holy Spirit? Would you guide me? Holy Spirit, would you give me ears to hear? Because I need to hear. Anybody a bit deaf like me? I'm deaf sometimes. I don't hear God. I don't mean physical death, I mean spiritual death. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we need to hear God, we need to follow Jesus. Preach it, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, just, in case, oh, just in case you're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. This is our God. So this is the situation we've got, and now we're in the kingdom of heaven. But how do we function, and how do we continue in this kingdom, when the enemy wants to put us in prison? Yes. Anybody even in prison? Who knows what it's like to be in prison? We know what it's like to be, I don't mean physical prison, I mean a prison like you're lost and wondering, is this real, is this right? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Go preaching, brother. Oh, <laughs> you, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's great. We're going to Ephesians chapter 6, okay? And it's the armour of God. And, and I knew our, our little fella had come in handy today. So we're going to borrow him. Come on. Come with me. Preach it, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to help me. He's this little fella today. Preach it. Armour of God, right? We're focusing. It's not real. It's not real, Lord. It's, it's an illustration. It's an illustration. We have a Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> We're talking about the of salvation. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah, we know about the belt of truth. We know about the sword of the spirit. We know about the breastplate of righteousness. We know about these things. Uh, we know about the shield of faith. And it's interesting. I, I was thinking about this. There's no shield. Mm. Do you know why? You can't see it. You can't yeah. see the shield of faith. Yes, it's, faith. it's faith. Yes. You can't see it. Yes. So that's why he's not got a shield of faith. Because there isn't one. It's there. You can't see it. You have to have, and, and you, you have a shield of faith, but you can't see it, but it's there. Mm. We can't see faith. Yes, we step out in faith. We don't yes, see faith. You, Hallelujah. Thank yeah. you. Lord. In the name of Jesus. It says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We're reading from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Now, I, once, I first heard about uh, the armor of God many years ago. Many years ago. And I didn't really get it, but I had this, this, these friends. And uh, they always talked about the armor of God. Yeah, I put the armor on every day. I put the armor on every day. And, uh, and I got to thinking about that. Well, what did it mean I put the armor on? You know, well, Lord, today I put the helmet of salvation on. I put the belt of truth. Lord, I've, I've got the sword of the spirit. I've got my feet, Lord. I put the boots on with the, you know, in order to share the gospel of, of mess. I've got the breastplate of righteousness. Did yeah. I forget anything? No. no. I'm, 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 right, I'm going. No. No, it don't work that way. Does, them are words. Yes. Them are words. Yeah. The Bible is the living word of God and we can know verses, you know, come near to God and he'll come near to you and it's great to know that in, in James chapter 4 verse 8. You know, uh, confess your sins. If you go on reading that, it talks about you, you know, it, 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 this is, it says, listen, you're not really worthy and you need to do this if you want to get near God. And we, can, and we can read these and we can do that, but do we actually invite Jesus? Do we actually come near God? Do we come near God and pray? Oh, you know, we can know scripture, but to let it actually penetrate and let it, you know, enter us. So, we have an helmet of salvation. So, do you wear an helmet of salvation or do you wear a hat of convenience? <laughs> oh, I like it. Helmet of salvation or hat of convenience? Yes. Do you get it? Yes. Helmet of salvation, yeah, I'm a Christian. Or hat of convenience, because it's convenient to be a Christian, because it stops me doing the wrong things. It's convenient to come to church. But do we really connect with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? And are we full of the Holy Spirit? This yeah. helmet of salvation to protect is not a hat of convenience. No. Is it a helmet of salvation or a hat of convenience that we're actually wearing? Yes. Is it a sword of the Spirit or is it a knife for butchering our bread? Yeah, yes, that's right. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Didn't think of that till now, thank you, Lord. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? This it's 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 armor and it's good, but do we believe it? Yes, yes. And how do we believe it? And we need that faith that we can't see in order to to go on forward. And so this is Jesus, right? So Jesus said, Follow me, didn't he? He didn't say, Okay, Peter and James and John, and off they go. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> How many people follow Jesus, or how many people let Jesus follow them? Oh. Hallelujah, that's a tough one, isn't it? This is Jesus. Do you know what? If this is Jesus, right, I'm glad I'm behind him. I'm glad I'm following him. Do you know what I mean? I want to be behind Jesus. I want to hold Jesus. Because Jesus is the first one to hit the enemy. I'm here. But so many of us, we try to hit the enemy, and Jesus is behind us. Oh, I better pray. Forgot to pray. The enemy is battering us. And then we decide to pray. Mm. No. Let Jesus sort the enemy out. Pray first. Get Jesus. Have the enemy of salvation. Let the word of God go. You know we talk about Jesus lives in us. And it can be a kind of like. It can trick us a little bit. Yes he does. But we shouldn't think that he's in us. We should think that we are following him. And he speaks to us and he communicates us, but yes. we have to have a different image. Yes. And the image is this today. God wants you to get this image. Yes. You're following Jesus. Yes. He's got the sword. He's got the sword. Yeah, don't get me wrong, right? If it's sounding like I'm, I'm going a bit off the scriptures, I'm not. No. What I'm trying to get across to us is that we follow Jesus and he strengthens us and helps us. But he equips us also with the yes. sword, with the word of God, the sword yes. of the spirit. Yes. He equips us. So when we're going in, you know, when we're going into battle, because we battle not against flesh and blood, we know that. It tells us here, doesn't it? Uh, Paul says in Ephesians 6, well, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Yeah. How many people like to fight flesh and blood? Or I don't like to fight, but end up fighting anyway. Yeah. We, we get clashing, don't we? There's always that. Whether it's, in, whether it's with our friends, our work colleagues, uh, our partners, our husbands, our wives, or whoever it is. 
family members, yeah. brothers, sisters, you name it. Yeah. The spikes goes on, it's all flesh and blood. Instigated by the rulers of this powers of the air. Yeah. Paul tells us, uh, against the rulers, against the authors, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Why? Because Jesus, maybe he's behind, maybe we forgot him and left him at home. We just go out. We, that's, why, that's why God tells the Israelites uh, about uh, when, when he was telling them the, the word, write them. Write them on the tablets of your heart. He told, write them on, like, on the tassels. Write them on the doorposts. Recite to them every day, all day. Because we're in a battle. Yes. So, so we need to get active, training, Holy Spirit training. Amen. Yes. Learning the scripture and believing yes. it. And not, not, not once a week, twice, every day. Yes. Every day. Yes. Hallelujah. Every day. Yes. For our struggle isn't against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, and powers of this dark world. Yes. And so this Jesus, who we follow. But we can go to John chapter 6, verse 66. And it's interesting how it's John 6, 66, 666. Mm. Because Jesus just told them that unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can have no part of me. Mm. You can have no part of the kingdom of heaven. Mm. And they're thinking, whoa, what's this? He's gone crazy. Mm. And they started to leave him. Yeah. And that verse says that they left him. Many, yeah, many. many left him. Mm. John 6, 66. Yeah. Many of them left him. The enemy came in. The enemy came in and, and, and disrupted them and they, and they left because they did not understand the deeper spiritual meaning that Jesus was trying to get across to yeah. them. Mm. And some of us are like that and I'm, I'm like that sometimes, I am. I don't understand. Anybody like me? Don't understand stuff sometimes? I do, I don't understand everything. But what I've learned, and let me tell you something, right? I learned this trick Friday morning. God, I were in a bad way. Because I preached Thursday night. Yeah. And, and I felt rubbish. And so that Friday morning I came in here and I thought, that's it, I'm never speaking again. I need God, you know. And I walked around here a few times and I prayed and I said, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you have to do something. And the Spirit of God just started to lift me and talk to me. And then he spoke to me about the helmet of salvation. He said, Peter, this is for me, by the way. Peter, he said, are you wearing an helmet of salvation or a hat of convenience? I thought, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, oh, that's, well. good. that's great. Thought. Sort of thought. No, it's a great thought. Yeah. Yeah. Same God speaks. It's a great thought. Every day, all day, yeah. speaks, yeah. speaks. Yeah. And then, and then God had me move this, and I was buzzing. <laughs> I was buzzing, and I, and I, and I did this, and I, and I, I gave him a rock, you know. And then, got, got the, you know, got the sword, got the word of God, hugging. I realised that I need to follow Jesus. Yes. 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 Not Jesus follow me. Yes. Yes. How do I do that, Lord? How do I do that? Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Yes. Jesus came out of the wilderness and he defeated the enemy. In the he couldn't touch him. Do you know if you go into the book of Jude, it talks about the battle and it talks about the battles and the angels. And it said, even the archangel, I think it's Michael. Yes. Mm. Even the archangel. Michael. He said, he, he, even he didn't go up against Satan. But he, he rebuked him in the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes. And these are the angels. Yes. And we are made a little lower than the angels. Yes. So why on earth do we think we can defeat the enemy? And, 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 and if he can make us think he's not there. Yes. Yes. There's enough preaching in churches these days that say Satan doesn't exist. Yes. Do you know that? Yes. There's enough preaching in churches that say every way leads to God. Every way you can be saved yes. it doesn't matter. Yes. It's rubbish. Because Jesus was the one that was nailed to the cross. Mm. And Jesus was the one that said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can have no part of me. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. And that's what we're going to do this afternoon uh, with communion. So I want, to, I want you to ask yourself a question. Mm. Am I wearing yeah. Yeah. a helmet of salvation? Mm. Or a hat of convenience? Yes. Mm. Am I... Good. Walking in front of Jesus and expecting him to follow me. Or is he walking in front of me and I'm following him? The questions that were, because it's good to challenge us, and I ask myself these questions. I have to ask myself these questions. Come on, Peter, what is it? What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, I desire for the power of God, a demonstration of the Spirit's power. I keep praying it, and I believe that that will come. Uh, it was interesting, it was like this, this morning me and my brother Paul, we were praying and, and uh, I was thinking that, Lord God, you know, it's in the post. Yeah. I felt the Spirit said, it's yeah. in the post. Yeah. 
So I said, Lord God, would you uh, raise up postmen to deliver the letters? Hallelujah. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. The, the words in the post, God said, reminded me of Daniel who prayed. 21 days later, he kept praying, but immediately the prayer and the answer to pr the prayer had been sent. But yes. there was a battle yes. in the heavenlies yes. before he could get to it. Three weeks, 21 days. Yes. We don't see any of this stuff. But Jesus told us it's there. And we don't need to see it if we follow Jesus, the instructions. We don't need to know everything. We don't need to know everything. We just need to know him. We just need to know Jesus, uh, that we're saved and that we're filled with the Spirit and that he's gone to prepare a place for each one of us. Amen. And not only that, that he's sent the Holy Spirit to come and live within us, through us, around us, and guide us and lead us. Anybody want some of that? Yes. Hallelujah. I want some of that. I so want that more than anything. So it comes out as Paul, and this is verse 14. It says, you know, this is for those people who are really wrestling with stuff. Sometimes you've just got to stand. You ever been in a, a, a situation that I just don't know what to do? I just do not know what to do in this situation. Well, God says, just stand. He tells us here in Ephesians 6, verse 14, he says, stand firm. Yes. Then. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. The belt of truth. When we stand firm, when Jesus is in front, we've got that belt of truth. That belt of truth. Yes. We've got the helmet of salvation. Yes. Yes. Jesus, Hallelujah. we've got to make Jesus number one. Yes. How, how, how big is your Jesus or how small is your Jesus? Is he the king of kings or is he just a guy in a book? Come on. Yes. Is he the Lord? Is he the living Lord? What, how deep do you want to go? You know, if you're not sure, you've got to start to question yourself. You know, God says, come now, let us reason together. Yes. Talk to him. Reason to him. To be honest, I, I, I'm not sure if it was on a Thursday night we were, we were speaking and it really spoke to me. I think it was from Galatians chapter 6. Uh, you were running a good race. Who was it that cut in on you? And do you know what the answer was? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I cut in on me. Yes, that's right. I stopped myself. It was me, me that started doing that stuff that I'd already stopped doing. It was me that yes. picked up addiction. It was me that picked up the drink again. It was me that picked the drugs. Right. It was me that started looking at pornography. It was me that started stealing. It was me that started being a bad-tempered, impatient sort of person. It was me. Yeah. I did. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Not blaming somebody else. It was me. Lord, it was me. Mm. Father God, would you forgive me? Mm. There's two Peters, two Peter Falls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There's two Peter Falls. There's, right. there's a nasty Peter Falls that's full of flesh and can get angry and can get impatient and can swear. And there's a Peter Falls that's full of the Spirit of God, a born again Peter Falls. And there's a battle, like Paul says, he bat there's a raging battle. Yes. The Apostle yeah. Paul, who wrote yeah. a lot of this stuff that we're experiencing, that he's entered in and saw miracles upon miracles upon miracles and had the most unbelievable life of being battered and shipwrecked and beaten. And the Apostle Paul said this, I don't do what I should do, right. and I keep doing what I shouldn't do. Yeah. Listen, people, we're in good, we're in good company. Yeah. So to stop us from doing the things that we shouldn't do, get behind Jesus. Follow him. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, is it all right if I do this? No, Peter, it's not. Is it all right if I get impatient? No, it's not. But is it all right if I continue to think these negative thoughts? No. Well, I'm the light of the world. No, it's not. Is it okay if I kind of get myself lost in doubt? No, okay. look, look, Peter. I'm the light of the world. I've called you out of darkness yes. into light. Yes. Amen. Be encouraged today. Amen. Let the light shine. Yes. Yes. We're going to take communion. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, are we just continuing on, right? Yeah. We're just going to let it flow. Yeah. So we're going to take a minute. Yeah. Hey, can I just say, if anybody wants to come and hug Jesus, this is Jesus today, <laughs> feel free. Feel free. If you are in the place where you think, you know what? I'll tell you what, try it. It's good. <laughs> Not back from Lauren. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Mm. Because it just does something. Mm. It did for me anyway. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just, uh, maybe no, it's just for me. No, it's yeah. But it's great. Because it's putting Jesus. And you just think, oh, wow, Lord Jesus, yeah. I want to follow you, Jesus. I want to follow you, Jesus. It's great. So, we're well, moving back. Just, just, take a, just take a step back. He slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Hallelujah. He glides. <laughs> he glides. He glides. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to... Uh, yeah, hallelujah. We're going to do the communion. Your shirt's on. Okay. Let me just... You know, that, what Peter shared there, 